guys may face and, and how to overcome those challenges. And sometimes that's the hardest part is, is dealing with those challenges that you guys face. And that can come in the form of time management, that can conform, uh, come in the form of um, relationships, right? That can come in the form of uh, just stress under pressure. Um, different obstacles that kind of get thrown in your way. And so I always kind of like to start out um, with the challenges, right? Because there are certain conversations that you need to have with yourself, okay? And so as you're going through the program, this is a very labor-intensive program. It's filled with a lot of material, right? And some of you guys are taking 31 hours, and some of you guys are taking 26 hours, and, and the workload itself can, can be a challenge in and of itself. But then you folks are also dealing with what? Communication barriers as well, and having to decipher what the professor is saying to you um, and, and trying to understand that so you can absorb the material a little bit better. So that is also kind of a challenge, right? Sometimes challenges come in the form of discipline. And that's one of the biggest things, is discipline. So as you're going through this process, um, there may be times when you incur challenges that uh, deal with relationships, right? And so if you have somebody at home who's living with you or a boyfriend or a girlfriend or a significant other, right? Sometimes those relationships, they have ups and downs, don't they? Relationships don't always go smooth, right? I've been married to my wife 20 years and we've had lots of ups and downs and we've always supported one another. I wouldn't be in the position I was in right now if it wasn't for my wife. But I also wouldn't be in the position right, I was in right now if I didn't let some things go, right? And you have to understand what it is you're trying to achieve. This is a very arduous program. It's very difficult to get through this program if your mind isn't in it. And so how do you get your mind in it? You have to eliminate distractions, right? That's the number one thing is eliminating distractions. And, and so what is a distraction? Um, you know, maybe I want to go hang out with my friends versus sitting down studying for Dr. Fox, right? <laughs> maybe I want to go to the baseball game versus studying for board meeting, understand? But what happens when I, when I don't have the discipline to eliminate the distraction? Things start to build up, right? That pressure starts to build up because now you've missed a day or you've missed two days of study time and that test is coming right around the corner. And so then what happens? Then the anxiety starts to build up. And then we go into sympathetic mode, right? And I'm not gonna go too much into it, but when we go into sympathetic mode, then we start dumping things from our memory, don't we? And then the stress builds up a little bit more. And so when it comes time to test, I don't perform as well on the test. And so those of you that have had me, and, and so ortho is, is one that I talk about a lot because I do love teaching ortho. It's one of my passions here at the university. And I make it very difficult, right? And I don't make it difficult in terms of I, I want you guys to do poorly. I make it difficult in terms of I want you to rise up to the challenge, right, mm -hmm. of doing well in that class because that's information that you take with you for the rest of your life. Well, if it's information that's important to you and this profession is that important to you and you have that much of a passion for this profession, then eliminating distractions should become very easy for you because you're not here to be a professional student, are you? Right? I'm here to get through this program within the four-year time frame so that I can go out and start changing lives. Understand? But sometimes eliminating distractions comes at a cost. And sometimes you may have to cut ties with certain people, right? People that have been your friends your whole life and people that you're very close to. You're not gonna ever find me in a toxic environment. I don't believe in drama, right? Now, there's a caveat to that though, right? Caveat means there's another side to that story. You will find me in a toxic environment if I'm trying to facilitate change. If I'm trying to make change in a toxic environment, an area where I feel that people can benefit from my support and my love, right? Then I'll be in that toxic environment. But you have to understand when your investment in that environment isn't benefiting that person and it's not benefiting you. I can only carry you so far, right? And this is what I tell my students in Ortho. I can drag you through the mud, kicking and screaming, but it's gonna be up to you to cross that finish line. If you're in a toxic environment and you're with people that are not supporting you and helping push you forward, right? 
What is your name? Nishka. Nishka. So if Nishka doesn't have people that are helping her push towards her goal, regardless if it's best friend or boyfriend or whoever it is, right? If that person's just dragging her down, she needs to have an honest discussion with herself and with that person and say, if I'm not going to get the support and the love and the determination that I need to push through this, I have to cut that cord, right? I have to cut the cord. And that comes at a cost because now it's emotional and there's heartbreak in it. But she has to understand that she has a goal that she's trying to achieve here. And so sometimes cutting that cord comes at the cost of losing somebody. And it could be family, right? Some of us, if not all of us, have family members that are just all about the drama. And you don't need that sort of <coughs> negativity in your life that's pulling you down, pulling you down. Now, I'm not saying completely leave that person in the dust. But you may have to sever ties for a while in order to achieve what it is you're trying to achieve. Understand that you're trying to create value in yourself. And so I ask this of my students also. I go around the room and I ask them, who is the most important person in the room? And what should my answer be? I am, right? So if I ask you who's the most important person in the room, you're going to say, I am, right? And that's not to create a big ego, OK? And that's not to make you think that you're above anybody. I'm not above anybody in this room. Everybody in this room can learn from me, and I guarantee you there's something in here that every one of you know that you can teach me, right? We're all on kind of a level playing field, and we're all here supporting one another. But if you don't feel like you're the most important person in the room, how are you going to create value in yourself? You have to love yourself first. Understand? You have to put yourself first. Now, I say that. There's a caveat to that, right? I need to put God first. Now, I'm not saying that to turn this into a spiritual or religious discussion. But in my life that I found when I started putting God first, better things started happening for me, right? And so I lost that somewhere along the way. And sometimes you lose that and you'll question that. And, but you have to understand, right? Putting myself first is putting God first. Because God created me in his image, right? So if you love yourself and you're good to yourself and you start creating value in yourself, you're going to be much better to the people out there that you're going to serve. Understand? And so you want to serve with purpose. You want to serve with purpose. So what is your purpose? You have to define 